Welcome to Educate Yourself Channels. I am Raja, member of London Institute of Banking and Finance. In this short video, I share my learnings on liquidity management and how it helps the companies and clients in managing the healthy cash flow for business operation. In today's fast moving market, where cash is not always freely available, Visibility over cash through information reporting is a good first step, but not always enough. Companies need tools and structure to effectively manage their business operations. Let us learn what is liquidity management. Liquidity management refers to the practice of managing cash, including assets that can easily be converted to cash Everyone manages liquidity in some way, whether as individual, managing monthly income, investments, outgoing in the form of payments or investment, or multinational corporations, managing complex account structure that hold cash and other assets in multiple currencies and in multiple regions or jurisdictions around the world. There are many tools that can be used to enable liquidity management. There are very widely used in complexity. What are the tools used in liquidity management? We shall examine different types of liquidity management tools and see how these along with payments can help us maximizing the cash that we have. The vast majority of the tools serve the corporate market and are not applicable to individual retail customers, with the exception of credit interest and overdraft. One of the simplest aim of liquidity management is to ensure that earning of credit interest on balances held in an account. Payment service provider often pay their customers based on the balances maintained in each account and may even apply tiered rates depending on the level of balances maintained in an account. Credit interest rate can vary. This can depend on the type of customer and also the provider's promotional activities. This can be linked to attracting new customers or can be directly related to the funding needs of the provider at any given time. For instance, if a bank needs to attract extra deposits to bolster its balance sheet, it might offer slightly higher rates to entice customers to leave additional excess cash in their current account or time deposit. Another simplest form of liquidity management is to ensure an account has an overdraft associated with it. An overdraft is a tool, is a line of credit that allows an individual or company to make payments from an account even if the account balance is zero. This requires prior agreement from a bank or other payment service provider which will perform credit checks to determine whether it is comfortable extending this type of lines of credit. The provider must be comfortable that the individual or company has enough income or assets to pay the overdraft according to the terms of the agreement. Overdraft are intended to be used for a very short period of time and widely considered not to be a good sources of long-term funding. To discourage customers from using overdraft as a long-term funding tool, banks or payment service provider often attach a higher interest rate to overdraft. If a customer requires outgoing funding or ongoing basis, a loan is more appropriate tool to help it manage its liquidity. Another tool is used in liquidity management is daylight overdraft, sometimes referred to as intraday credit limits, can be used by corporations as well as other banks to manage their payments. 
or cash flow which is the movement of funds in and out of an account on a intraday basis daylight overdraft or not normally provided to the individual retail customer similar to an overdraft this requires lines of credit to be granted by the banks or payment services provider in order to ensure that the company has enough daily cash flow to meet payment obligations prior to the account being funded each day by day closure of business note that a daylight overdraft is not intended to become an actual overdraft and is often referred to as daylight exposure for this reason banks and customers uh, payment service provider do not generally charge corporate customers for low daylight overdraft usage on the other hand some banks will charge other providers particularly correspondence bank for regular or heavy daylight overdraft usage this is particularly prevalent in certain currencies and certain types of business such as us dollar treasury clearing for financial institutions as this can use up a significant amount of a bank's credit facility with a central bank for example the us federal bank has a system in place that tracks banks usage of daylight overdraft limit on a minute by minute basis and calculate a charge for any uncollateralized daylight overdraft another tool is called zba zero balance accounts or regular current accounts from which the account holder can make payment and receive payments however funds are not held in the accounts overnight at the end of the processing day the balance in zero bank accounts or whether positives or negative in credit or overdrawn is automatically moved to another account owned by the account holder funds are physically moved by the bank between the zero balance account and another account which is usually the customer's main account often referred to as header account the account header holder does not need to intervene to make the this process happen zero balance accounts uh, give a company a ability to hold multiple sub accounts in an country or often to segregate different types of payments or easy out the reconciliation process while concentrated all available funds at the end of the day into a single main account from which it can manage its cash positions the funds are not returned to the zero balance account the next day they remain still in the main account this type of accounts remove the burdens from the accounts holder for calculating the cash position in numerous accounts and then initiating the payment instruction to concentrate funds in one account zero balance accounts is drastically reduce the potential for error and allow companies to maximize all of the cash within the structure on an automated basis zero balance accounts are denominated in the same currency and generally domiciles in the same country as the customer's main account although the cross border zero balance accounts are possible in some jurisdictions additionally zero balance accounts are owned by a single legal entity or easier to manage than zero balance accounts owned by multiple legal entities such as subsidiaries of a parent company this is because physical movement of cash within a cba structure that includes multiple legal entities creates intercompany loans which can lead to tax consequences and accounting issues for a corporation in any case zero balance accounts are very popular and provide for an effective way to manage cash in many countries variation to traditional zba structure exists 
and are usually referred to as sweep structures. As with ZBAs, funds are physically moved on an automated basis from one account to another. However, the balance need not be brought to the zero at the end of each processing day. Instead, a customer can leave a specific amount in the account that is being swept. This is normally referred to as a target balance. A customer may choose to leave a balance in an account for many reasons, such as ensuring payment can be processed easily and early the next day if the credit line is not associated with the accounts or to create a balance that may not earn interest so that the direct fees are not charged to the account. In a sweep structure, it is, it is also not necessary to move funds from one account to another on a daily basis. The automated sweep can take place at a regular interval such as weekly, monthly, or even when a target balance is reached. Of course, a customer can make a payment to move funds from one account to another account outside of the automated sweep schedule if it requires fund. Sweep structure are also similar to ZBA structure as the accounts are generally dominated in the same currency. Sweep structure owned by a single legal entities are easier to manage than sweep structure involving different legal entities because the physical movement of funds within the sweep structure that includes multiple legal entities creates intercompany loans and can lead to tax consequences as well as associated issues for a corporations. A further variation is the two-way sweep. As the name implies, funds be swept from one account to another and then back again at regular intervals. Payment used to sweep the funds is automated. Thus, two-way sweep can be useful liquidity management tool to automatically move funds from accounts depending on where cash is anticipated to the anticipated to be needed at certain times. Note that while sweeps are employed by corporation, they can be used by individual retail clients from time to time. For example, a bank may offer a client the ability to move excess cash from an account to a savings account or from current to an overdraft account. Here, a sweep would be employed to move funds from one account to another account, ensuring the full automation of the process. Another tool is called notional pooling. Notional pooling differs from ZBAs and sweep structure is that in that there is no physical movement of funds between accounts. In other words, there is no payment component associated with notional pooling. It is purely a liquidity management tool. However, notional pooling allows companies to use their funds more effectively, which has a direct impact on the way the payments are made. The primary reasons why a corporate would engage in notional pooling is to take advantage of surplus balances in one account, offsetting them against an overdraft position in another account. In other words, notional pooling allows debit and credit interest to be offset. Interest is paid or charged on the net balance of all the accounts in the notional pool. The true benefits of notional pooling from a payment perspective comes from the fact that a pool, unlike ZBA or other sweep structures, allow different legal entities within a company to use their collective liquidity in a more effective manner. There are fewer tax consequences and accounting issues associated with notional poolings as compared to, as compared with ZBAs or SWIFT structure because there is no physical movement of cash between entities which cannot create intercompany loans. If legal entities within a company participate in a notional pooling arrangement, the service provider may require cross guarantees between subsidiaries in a pool to ensure 
proper accounting treatment by the service providers. The need for this guarantee often depends on the regulatory environment in the jurisdiction where the notional pooling takes place. Multiple currencies may be allowed to take part in the notional pool. This type of structure is generally referred to as multi-currency notional pooling. Multi-currency notional pooling is more complex than single currency notional pooling as the service provider must manage the complexity of bringing multiple foreign currencies to a common base currency in order for the appropriate calculations to take place. The service provider must also take into account the differential in the underlying interest rate associated with different currencies. Given that the more complex nature of this type of pooling, bank will often charge more to implement this type of structures. Note that not all countries allow notional pooling. For example, currently in include US and Japan in these countries, ZBAs or other sweep structures are currently followed. Another relatively new concepts in payments are POBO, ROBO. POBO, payment on behalf of, ROBO, receive on behalf of. So both POBO and ROBO are relatively new concepts in payment. Here, all the subsidiaries within a legal entity give permission for one entity to make all of its payment and accept all of its receipt. This creates efficiency for the customer since it allows various subsidiaries to use the main account and close their current accounts, which leads to cost savings. Now that we have seen many tools in managing the liquidity of corporations, how an organization choose best tools for liquidity management? Payments are tools that allow companies to best manage their liquidity. The more complex an organization, the more it can benefit from liquidity management tools. Some companies may find that one tool is sufficient while others may employ several tools at one time. For instance, a company operating with branches in a single currency in one country may use zero balance accounts to help manage its cash more effectively. On the other hand, a company operating in multiple currencies and in a number of jurisdictions may find that a combination of zero balance account two-way sweeps and notional pullings are more advantageous when managing the group's liquidity. That's all. I'm thanking you for watching and listening to my compilations on liquidity management. I'm in the learning process. Please leave your valuable comments and encouragement to me. Mikke Mikke Nandri.